a lot of people find meditation a challenge that it's it's hard to sit down by yourself and get yourself to do this practice that especially in the initial stages can have a lot of challenges so um how can we make this easier to be more consistent to deepen the experience and to make it more effective and an app can really do that hello and welcome everyone um i just wanted to check and just bring this up um, well mm -mm -mm. so that i could monitor for questions if they come up why is that so hard to do sorry folks <laughs> It's there now. Okay. All right. Great. I see Randy is there and Kiefer is there. Hello, friends. Yes, I see Kiefer posted to our group. That's great. Thanks, Great. Um, all right. Well, hello and welcome everyone to Heart Mind Happy Hour. Um, I'm very excited today to be interviewing Kevin Shaninger and having a conversation about uh, guided meditations uh, and apps, and specifically their new app, uh, Raising Our Vibration app. So, welcome, Kevin. Uh, thank you, Holly, and thank you for having me on again. And uh, thank you also for the great work you're doing with your life coaching and um, the articles that you're writing that describe your own inner process. I've really been enjoying reading those. And, and uh, just thanks for helping to bridge between a scientific approach and a spiritual approach and spiritual practices and bringing that all together to help us, you know, raise our consciousness. So thank you. Thank you very much for that. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm having so much fun on this journey, um, which started over a year ago, you know, to, um, uh, this new career with coaching, which has been, I'm just really excited about. I made an announcement last week. I got certified through the human potential Institute. So I'm really excited to yeah, work with folks. Yeah. Thank you. Um, who, yeah, who want to dive into this world and need some support. Um, but uh, this actually fits really well um, overall in my own personal journey because, you know, I met you through through Raising Our Vibration um, and had a chance to do the course that you're offering. And of course, now we're going to talk today about the app that you created in the book with um, Stephen Altair. And so, uh, you know, so I have this a personal experience as well, which um, we can weave in and um, as well. But I'm yeah, really, really excited for uh, to talk to you and and to you for for this app that it's come out. I'm sure it's a culmination of a phenomenal amount of work. So congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's it really began probably back in 2008 um, with um, starting to put meditations online and cultivating a community of practice and then learning what helped people in terms of guided meditation and how to deliver them. And so this app is really the culmination of how to deliver this in a really easy, accessible way. And uh, yeah, so it's exciting. We're really happy about it, Stephen and I both. Yeah, yeah. Well, great. Well, we'll dive into that app specifically in a little bit, but I think we talked about, let's, let's start a little bit more generally at first, just about meditation apps. And, you know, I can think of this broader question of, you know, can an app really help you meditate? Let's just start there with the big picture of your perspective on that. Yeah, great. Well, first of all, uh, one of the 
main things I've discovered in, in teaching meditation, and especially in teaching online, is that a lot of people find meditation a challenge, that it's, it's hard to sit down by yourself and get yourself to do this practice that especially in the initial stages can have a lot of challenges. So um, how can we make this easier to be more consistent, to deepen the experience and to make it more effective? And an app can really do that. Um, and there's several different kinds of apps and several different ways that you can get support. Um, so maybe we'll talk a little bit about some of the different kinds of apps you might have. Um, this yeah, app that, that we're putting out is, has guided meditations. So there's, um, you know, something that you can just turn on, click a button, listen to and follow along. It makes the whole process very simple to get started and also to keep track of your attention and know when you're done and, you know, have this time period that's very focused. Um, and then there's apps that log your practice. So I've also found that logging your practice is really important, um, not only to process the experience, but also to look back over time because meditation is something where you have these little incremental steps of progress over a long period of time. And sometimes it's hard to see that progress. But if you look back at a log of, oh, here's when I started, like you said, over a year ago. And now look at what I'm writing now after my practice. Oh, wow, okay. In that year, I've come a long way. And so logging your practice can be a really great tool to make your practice more substantial, but also to keep a record of it so you can really see, yeah, I know there's days when it feels like I'm going nowhere or going backwards or whatever, but if I compare to what I've done you know, way back when, even a month ago, oh, I can see some changes there. So logs can be really helpful. There's biofeedback apps like the Muse um, and their program uh, where you are um, listening to sound feedback and having your brain waves measured. And if you're achieving certain brain waves, then they give you really pleasant sounds. And if you're uh, not achieving those brain waves, you get stormy sounds. And so it's a way of give, getting real time feedback right in the middle of the meditation on how, how's it going and how you're doing in terms of uh, modulating your state. Um, and then there's biometrics. So there's EEG, there's heart rate variability, there's pulse oximetry, there's galvanic skin response. These are all ways of measuring the effect that your meditation is having on your physiology and, and your mind body. So all of them can be really effective and beneficial. They can also have some pitfalls. Um, so I think we'll, as we go along, we can talk a little bit both about the benefits and also the potential pitfalls with different kinds of apps. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, yeah, would like to talk about benefits and pitfalls. And before we move there, um, I really hear your point about journaling, especially. Um, I, um, you know, as many people know, I've been tracking my brainwaves with Muse. Um, and I wish now that I had taken the time to make more notes um, on the early phases to accompany my graphs. Because, um, you know, them without the notes is um you're really actually missing some important information um yep and more recently i've started uh journaling more detailed every single meditation uh and you know like a paragraph you know enough to really like to take five or ten minutes to to really write down and document the experience and i found it very much actually like dream journaling like you've um you forget and then when you start writing then the, the experience comes back yeah mm -hmm. yeah exactly. yeah um which is the same thing that happens with dreams and um and you pull out this rich fabric and detail that 
sort of is lost right afterwards, but you can recover it, I find, through writing. Exactly. Yeah, it's the same thing with meditation. You know, if you think, okay, I'm going to meditate for, I have 10 minutes, I'm going to meditate, and I sit down, mm -hmm. breathing deep, oh, okay, feel relaxed. Okay, now time to rush off into my day. That's going to have an effect. You know, it's better than not doing the practice, right? But it's going to have more of a momentary effect. Whereas if you give yourself enough time that, okay, I'm going to do my practice, but then I'm going to take time to process the experience afterwards. I'm really going to go back and record in my mind what were the significant poignant moments, any insights that I gained, and also record those states in my mind and body so they become something that I can easily return to. And then really take time to write that out. And as you're writing, like you said, new insights come to you and you process the experience, you integrate it in your body, heart, mind in a much deeper level so it becomes more a part of your being. And um, I know this may be a little off track, but it's the same idea as we, um, our younger son is going off to college this year and we're, we're, um, we're thinking, oh, what kind of laptop should we get him and what kind of, you know, and so on. And they're like, we really encourage people, our students now to have notebooks and pencils. And that's what we want them to bring is notebooks and pencils because we found that the act of writing in a notebook really integrates the information on a much deeper level and they get it. And it becomes more a part of them by that physical motion of writing. So same idea applies to meditation, dream journal, that physical activity of writing, logging, keeping a journal in whatever form, electronic or, or handwritten is really important. Yeah, yeah, I take your point quite well. So I appreciate that. So, um, so let's dive in a little bit to the benefits and pitfalls of, of apps. What are some of the benefits? Yeah, so first, if you're um, using a guided meditation um, app, the first benefit of it is it gives you a real concrete structure to follow. I guess meditation can be, especially initially, kind of nebulous, like, okay, I'm just going to sit down, pay attention to my breathing, and I notice all my thoughts and I have all these feelings and my back hurts, and, and it can very quickly become kind of a frustrating, um, confused experience. So a guided meditation will give you a structure, say, okay, I'm going to do it for this period of time. I'm following this sequence of cues. And then it cues your attention to pay attention, right? So it trains your attention to listen and then to track an inner cue or an inner felt state. And so it guides you into accessing interoception, the inner felt sensations. And uh, that can be really focusing for the mind and give you a structure, give you something to follow. Because mm -hmm. the mind, if not given something to focus on and follow, is going to associate all over the place. And so a guided meditation can give you something to focus on and follow. Um, it can give you a series of cues, a series of steps that gradually take you deeper and deeper into the process and lead you into deeper states. Um, so that can be a real you know, positive benefit of having a guided meditation. Um, also, it's a great way to learn new meditation styles. Mm -hmm. So um, embedded in a guided meditation is a series of cues and a series of steps that will teach you what this meditation style is about and the cues that are um, given in this particular style. And it reminds you of those cues. Um, and then it helps you to not only follow steps, but also what to pay attention to while you're meditating. So it, guided meditation will cue you now. Okay, now focus here, feel this, notice this. It just guides your attention to pay attention more in a more detailed way and to stay on track. And that can really lead you into a much deeper state of meditation. So, mm -hmm. so that's a real benefit of, of following um, a guided meditation. Yeah, 
and that very much matches with my my own experience of working with your meditations and others you know both the ability to learn new styles um but just you know the first time i really experienced going deeper in meditations was in the sem meditations that we did in the course together mm -hmm. um i had not experienced that level of depth truly mm -hmm. um and so it very much took me there and then you know have uh, found found after I learned those cues, then I could do them on my own in a, you know, silent way. Yes, exactly. And, and that's a great progression. It's like a guided meditation will teach you a sequence of steps, a sequence of cues. And as you master those, and as you embody those, then they become a part of your consciousness that then you can self-guide yourself. And that's mm -hmm. a great progression. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that I mean, ultimately, um, it seems that it feels that being able to there is it fair to say that there's some, to some degree a, a handrail that you know or training wheels that you can let go of, and then even go deeper. Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, and and it depends on where you start and and you know how what guidance you need at what point in your practice. Because I, I do think it matters a lot whether you're really just starting in meditation or you've done it for a few years or you've done it for a few decades, that there are different handrails that are helpful for you at, at different stages of your practice. Um, mm -hmm. But eventually, yeah, I think the goal is to master the inner cues and embody them in your own consciousness so that you self-guide and at that point really the practice itself is your teacher the, the, by paying attention more and more closely to what's happening in the present moment inside in your practice that's what's going to guide you into deeper and deeper states mm -hmm. yeah i've also found that uh, guided meditations can be helpful if i'm um, just in a, you know, in a strange spot for whatever reason, wake up and I feel tired and I'm just like, yes. I'm not up to doing my own silent meditation and I just need some help. <laughs> right. Absolutely. And yeah, I mean, that, that is one great, um, benefit of a guided meditation is that it's going to reliably lead you on a path to specific states um, not that those states will be the same every day, but it will, it will help you and assist you, um, pull you out of whatever that state is that you woke up in and guide you into uh, another state of consciousness. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, super helpful there. Even if you're mostly moved on to a silent practice, it's like, oh, but you can have those guided meditations there when you need them. Yeah, and I, I think it's great to use, to use, um, and if I was uh, suggesting a way to use guided meditations is to do a guided meditation each day and also to have a self-guided meditation each day. So because there's something you learn um, in each of those practices that, that can be slightly different. Mm -hmm. So maybe choose, oh, in the morning I do a guided meditation, in the evening I do a silent meditation. Yeah, something and the, like that. yeah, something like that. Like a, in the morning is a great time for a guided meditation because, you know, a lot of us, you, you know, you may wake up and you're faced with the day and you, you have all these different thoughts and feelings and, and you just want to kind of get oriented and you want to get centered and you want something to bring you into that state of being reliably and um, so that's a great time, I think, to use a guided meditation. Uh, whereas at the end of the day, just being open to going deeper and allowing, you know, the processing of the day's experiences to let go and to go deeper into a state of silence and stillness. Uh, that can be a great time for that and kind of get you ready for sleep and letting go of the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so we've talked about some benefits. Let's talk a little bit about some drawbacks. Mm -hmm. Are there yeah. some drawbacks? Uh, yeah, I, I, you know, as over the years of, of leading different guided meditations and 
and putting out di different meditation programs. And, and at this point, I think I've recorded over, probably over 200 different guided meditations. And so one thing that I can see happening with people is the pitfall of dabbling. And um, what I mean by that is it's like, oh, I think I'll do this one today. And then, oh, I'm going to go over here and do that one. Oh, I see this this new style over here, let me do that. And then it's kind of like, um, it can become like a spiritual materialism to where you're, you're feeling like uh, you're just gathering experiences, different experiences, or feeling like you need to uh, read the next book on meditation or take the next course on meditation or do the next guided meditation. And it's kind of accumulating more knowledge, more thoughts, more different practices, more experiences, when the goal of meditation is to clear and let go, right? So uh, this dabbling or thinking, I always need more, I need to um, consume more different practices or more different experiences can be a pitfall because it prevents you from taking one or two practices and just going deep and really kind of mining those practices and f using allowing the practice to then lead you beyond the practice into deeper states because ultimately any meditation technique the point of it is to take me beyond the technique to take me beyond um, attachment to having a specific state of being and to take me into a state of just pure consciousness beyond form, beyond text techniques, um, beyond all the things I know about meditation and into this open state of pure consciousness. Mm -hmm. um, so dabbling and spiritual materialism, that, that can be a real pitfall, especially when you get an app and you're like, oh, I've got 80 different meditations, I, right? So the nice thing about that is there's something for everyone and something for each stage of practice. And it's really important to say, okay, why am I meditating? What do I want to get out of this? Where am I in my practice? And what would be most helpful for me to do right now? And let me stick with that until I've really gotten that, until I'm ready, ready for the next thing. Instead of thinking I have to always have the next thing. It's like, well, there's a time when I need the next thing. I'm ready for the next thing. And um, then I move on. Um, so, so dabbling, that, that's one. Another um, downfall I see with, with like... Um, with the EEG measurement, for example, and, and measuring my state. Measuring my state, it can be helpful, but it can very, very easily lead to comparison and self-judgment. It's, it's in fact, as you know, we've, we've interacted on these communities, I honestly, more than half of what I see there is comparison, self-judgment, Oh, did I have the right experience? Am I, is this a false experience? Is it a true experience? Are you really getting that brainwave? What's the right brainwave to get? Um, all that nonsense. Um, when the idea of the practice is to create greater awareness and acceptance and openness and detailed attention to inner experience. And so if measurement is helping with that, then that's awesome. If it really helps you to say, oh, okay, what's happening here? And how did that correlate with my inner state? And what can that tell me about how I can cue myself to go deeper? Then that's a great, great use of measurement. And if measurement becomes um, measuring up, then it's a bad use of measurement. Mm -hmm. I take your point there so wholeheartedly. It is such a slippery slope on the comparison. Um, you know, uh, somebody who's certainly been vulnerable, felt vulnerable to that, um, seeing various graphs of other people with other states that look, 
better, better, whatever that better, means. Right. right. <laughs> or, or even the idea of like, I had a good meditation or a bad meditation. meditation. It's like um, mindfulness, which is one of the keys in meditation, is approaching all of it with just paying attention, observing curiously without judgment, without yeah. good or bad, just saying, oh, okay, here's what was happening there. Oh, I correlate that with I went off on this thought or I had this feeling or, but just having that open accepting attitude of whatever happens, that acceptance of myself, right? Mm -hmm. Which then leads to acceptance of others and acceptance of, of, you know, the whole diversity of experiences and beings on this planet that attitude of acceptance and non-judgment is like foundational. It's like, if that's not happening in meditation, then bring that into meditation because that is foundational, right? Back to the beginning. Back to the beginning. <laughs> and yeah, so it is just uh, cultivating that state of wide open awareness, right? The open focus brain, right? Just mm -hmm. that wide open, focus where I'm taking in all the sensory information and I'm observing it and feeling it and welcoming it and going into it in, in deeper detail and having that lead me without judgment, just without, is this right? Is, is this wrong? Am I having the right experience? It's like, whatever is happening is what your body and mind and heart are doing right now. Is mm -hmm. that that is that just is, and so it's going with what is, and by going through what is, we open up into deeper places. Yeah, well, and anytime you are analyzing, you're by definition not in what is. Right? Exactly right, and <laughs> and in meditation, we're we're letting go of the. Um, evaluative analytical mind in the sense of we are very precisely paying attention in fact we're paying deeper attention than in our normal states of mm -hmm. consciousness most likely but it's not in a dissecting and uh, comparing and contrasting way it's in a way of appreciating and immersing in and becoming more fully absorbed in the present moment experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I also want to go back to something um, about the dabbling um, pitfall, which I also have certainly experienced personally. So I take your point on that. Um, and I think there can be a lot of beginner confusion about should I do this or should I do this? And I really take your point about going deeply into one practice. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess I would couple that with the benefit of a teacher mm -hmm. um, of not, you know, believing that you can really, I mean, it's wonderful that there are apps and it has, I'm sure many more people meditating as a result of apps, mm -hmm. but um, but understanding that there is a deeper path that you can take with the help of a teacher and a dedicated path. And that just seems really, for anybody that really wants to pursue this more deeply, that feels fundamental to me. Do you agree? Um, yeah, I do believe that it's important to go deeply into a path um, and that the path itself is the teacher. Um, and it can be really beneficial to have an in-person teacher to interact with. I mean, that, that's why we offer our 10-week course, because it, it is invaluable to um, not only get instruction, but also feedback and interact with a group. And, and there is something that you gain in that um, in-person experience that's invaluable. Um, at the same time, for instance, on the the Raising Our Vibration Meditation app, all the meditations are in the on the path of subtle energy meditation. So it is kind of a, no matter if you're doing a five minute practice or a 50 minute practice, all those 80 meditations 
are along this path based on interoception of inner sensations, which leads into subtle energy sensation, which leads into uh, experience of stillness, silence, and spaciousness, which, which leads into pure awareness. Mm -hmm. So um, there is kind of a congruence of everything that's on there, even though there's all these different meditations, they are leading you into a specific path of meditation. And for me, it's that path that's the teacher. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hear that. And I, and I will echo that, you know, that uh, when I, I mean, I've really saw incredible gains in my own practice by joining the ROV class and being kind of walked through that with a group of people and you and Steve, and it really was helpful. So a plug for for the class, for your class, but in general for people to join, you know, a group that they can learn through. I think it's invaluable. Yeah, yeah. And so these online communities have been really, uh, well, especially in this time now when we can't get out and do in-person classes, um, these online communities where we're sharing meditation experiences and sharing our measurements of those sometimes and, and having online courses and having these interviews and all that interaction uh, just makes the path of the practice um, more a more substantial, real, interactive path uh, in our life. So, mm -hmm. but, yeah, this has been it's been great to um, be part of these communities online. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I think, um, I mean, it, yeah. <laughs> I think the thing that I'm missing now that I'm very aware of is the desire to go do a seven day retreat, you know, with yeah. <laughs> you and Steven or with yeah. anyone, frankly, I would just right. love to be able to step away and do a, you know, a focused retreat. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, for now we have these, these online approaches and these apps, and these are something that support us in a daily practice, mm -hmm. right? Like the point of the app, is to support the daily practice. And then, you know, going in and having a course which is really intensive and focused period of time where you're really uh, deep in your practice or a retreat where you're immersed in it for a long period of time, that can take your practice to the next level as well. But it's the daily practice. It really, that's where it's at. It's like, if you want to use meditation as a path to release stress and develop a deeper sense of peace and love and inner light and awareness. Um, it's doing it every day that is the only way to do it. It is something that you need to find a way to do it every day, even if it's a 10 minute practice, because that the practice itself is going to lead you deeper if you're doing it every day. Um, so I can't emphasize that enough is that daily practice uh, as your best teacher and your your path. Yeah, yeah I mean, I've certainly found that tr to be true for myself, for sure. And, you know, having to having a um, practice morning and evening has just been a yeah. wonderful addition. Really. Yeah, and that that's a great way to do it. I, I, Stephen and I both highly recommend that and do that ourselves um, for decades now. And it's it's invaluable. It just, it also kind of creates the, the rhythm of your life is then centered between the, your morning and your evening practice. Like your day starts with that practice. So no matter how you wake up feeling in the morning, if you initiate your day with mindfulness of your inner state and meditation to take you into a uh, elevated state of awareness and relaxation and peace, um, then that's much more easily returned to throughout the day. It's like a reference point in your day. You've kind of set down a flag in your day and said, here's where I want to come from in everything I do today. And so you put down that flag and then you get off into your day and you have that as a reference point. So no matter what happens, you can say, oh, let me take a moment recall that experience from the morning. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. Now uh, let's go forward from here. And then at the end of the day, having that 
a practice where you just allow the day, the events of the day to just let go and process through and release the whole day and then come into a state of deep peace and, and awareness before going to sleep. It's invaluable at mm -hmm. just setting the other end of your day with, with your practice. Um, and then that, that changes how your whole life feels. It, it just shifts, not your, just your momentary state of consciousness, but it shifts where you're coming from in every interaction in your life and what you t will focus on during the day and how you relate to everything. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I've certainly experienced that myself very much. I really, really uh, hear and feel what you're saying deeply, so. Um, let's dive in a little bit, if you don't mind, to back to the to the app specifically. I would just love to hear a little bit more about how it came to be. You said, uh, you know, 2008 sounds like it was the genesis <laughs> moment when you realized this is what you wanted to do. Tell us a little more about that. Yeah, so I've been um, teaching in-person classes for um, uh, several years in meditation and qigong meditation specifically, which is, uh, you know, sensing the life force within you and then following the life force through your body and then beyond into expanded sense of feeling universal energy. Um, and I've been doing that in in-person classes and um, and and one-on-one -on -one sessions for years. And I really wanted to reach out to a lot wider audience. And so in 2008, um, oh, actually in 2006, so now I'm remembering. They, it was actually 2006 when I wrote this Learn Qigong Meditation Program that was something, a home study course, right? And I, so I wrote this uh, manual for it and recorded eight guided meditations for it and said, oh, let me, and let me figure out how to put this out online, sell this online. And, and I found a, um, a partner in the UK who was a marketer and we, he's like, oh, I'd love to put this out. So that kind of started it. And, and what I realized through the Learn Qigong Meditation Program was that uh, I, it was asking way too much of people to do that on their own, to think that, oh, I'm gonna follow through this. No, no so many people did. Be, you know, in anything, there's going to be people who just take it and go for it. But the majority of people, that was a lot to ask, to mm -hmm. follow through on an eight-week program of guided meditations on their own at home. So mm -hmm. then in 2008, I'm like, okay, I want to kind of summarize and simplify this system and develop this core energy meditation system, which was a 48-page um, booklet and a 20 minute meditation, or actually a seven minute meditation leading into a 20 minute meditation leading into a 40 minute meditation. That was it. And a log, a meditation log. And that just caught and that went, that was up to date. That's the most successful presentation of meditation online that I've had. I think we had over 165,000 downloads. Wow. And, um, so from that, I was like, okay, we've got to make this easier. It's like, how can we make this easier for people? That's the thing. People are telling me, oh, it's, it's just too hard for me to get myself to practice. And, and I know it's good for me. I know I should do it. You know, it's, everybody tells me I should, and I know I should, but I just can't get myself to practice. So I'm like, it's got to be an easier way. Um, so I, I had started this... Um, um, uh, mind body training, uh, spiritual growth monthly community, uh, with this, uh, with Matt Clarkson from the UK. And so we thought, oh, well, if we have an online community and we give people content each week and we follow up with, um, coaching calls and so on, then we'll, we'll help people, um, to do this. And so I did that for a number of years and, um, Let's see from 2008 to 2018, I think. And that, that was, you know, there were definitely people who 
uh, benefited from that. But still, again, it was asking too much of people. It, I just found people are busy. It is, they've got too much to do. And um, so how can we make this easier, more accessible? I can just, you know, press a button, you know, just wake up, press a button, sit down, listen, follow, and have my practice. So this idea of developing a, an app started to um, grow. And then my uh, son, Greg, is an AI programmer. And so for a few years ago, I was like, Greg, how about, you know, designing an app for me and we can go in, in on it. And uh, yeah, he, he didn't have that much interest in it. But then uh, just over a year ago, I think it was, he came to me and said, yeah, I've been on these discussion groups and they're like, meditation apps are the number one growing app. And <laughs> he's like, yeah, I'm into that. Let's, let's, let's do one. And so Stephen and, and Greg and I got together and um, started to work on this and, um, and then presented it to this core group in the ROV community and let you guys work on it, feedback to it and give us advice and suggestions. And, and I will tell you, putting out an app is quite a process to work through everything that Google and Apple uh, wants you to do. So if there's something you don't like in the app, <laughs> it's probably because this is the way we had to do it uh, for Google and Apple. It's not because necessarily this was exactly how we had envisioned it. But um, anyway, the feedback so far has been that, yes, it's really easy to just, you know, open my phone, click on the app, and it's right there, you know. Yeah. That, it's yep. that fast. And now I just say, oh, I want to go beyond. I want to do relaxing down three lines. Now I'm into that meditation and hit and I go. Um, so it's that quick and easy to get started with my meditation practice. And I think that's, that's really key, especially now when, you know, people have so much stress and anxiety and so much to do. And the easier that this process of meditation can be, the, the more likely it's going to be consistent. And if you're consistent, then you're gonna go deeper. And if you go deeper, it's gonna be way more effective in terms of shifting the state of consciousness you live from and how you perceive this life and yourself and others and how you interact in the world and the way you go about your life, the level of awareness you live from, and, and that's where it's at. I mean, that's that's the whole point of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So, if somebody were to download your app and was just getting started, where would you suggest they begin? Yeah, well, your the app? first first thing I would do is is ask yourself um, a couple questions. Um, the first question is, why do I want to meditate? Is that it's really important to know why you want to do this um, because you're not going to feel like doing it every day when you wake up. But if you remember why it's important to you to do this and you bring that into your mind, then that's going to help you make that simple step of going, okay, boom, press a button and get started. That's all. You just need enough inspiration, motivation to say, okay, yes, I'm going to get up and I'm going to hit this button. I'm going to sit here for a period yeah. of time. So, oh, yeah, that why, I'm sorry, I'm going to interrupt you and just say, yeah. I just really agree. And I, it's one of the things I work on with my clients fundamentally is, you know, understanding the value of neuroplasticity, that they can change their mental states there. They yes. can change their brain and understanding that why is, can be huge motivation. Yeah, exactly. So that's why in the in the 10 week course that we start with these five questions that really dig into what's your why um, in your meditation. But just asking that simple question, just why do I wanna meditate? So that it's very clear to you and you're like, yeah, oh, I want that. That's what I'm after, at least initially, because it's gonna change as you, as you go on. But what's, what's gonna get you to sit down and hit this button and follow along? And, um, and then the second is to ask yourself just with that mindfulness, without judgment or, or evaluation, just where am I in 
in my meditation practice? Am I just starting? Um, have I developed a certain level of the ability to relax, consciously relax and concentrate into absorption? Or where am I in that scale? If I'm just starting, make it as easy as possible for yourself by, uh, we have a section here of mini meditations that are five to 10 minutes long. It's like, if you're just starting, don't think that you have to meditate for an hour. Okay, that's, that. it's not gonna happen, most likely. I'm not, I can't tell you what's gonna happen for you, but I can tell you it's most likely not gonna happen. You need to establish a daily routine of five minutes or 10 minutes and really groove that daily routine of five or 10 minutes. And then you can build from there. So if you're a beginner, I'd suggest the mini meditations and you just click on there. There's a whole bunch of mini meditations. Just pick one that you like the image that you see there. You like the description. It's like, oh yeah, I need that. Cause it'll, the description will say, here's what you're gonna get in this meditation. So, oh yeah, I need that. So click that one and do that one for a week or two. Like don't think that you need to, you see all these meditations and these different levels, but really groove that five minutes and that one practice and really get it so it's a reliable state for you. So when you think about doing it, you're like, oh yeah, I can't wait to do that. Um, Cause that's the key um, to getting yourself to meditate consistently is to do a meditation until you really feel it and you absorb the experience and you're like, oh, this is an oasis. I can't wait to do that when I wake up in the morning or before I go to bed at night. Um, so yeah, ask yourself why, and then where are you in your practice? Start with committing to a daily practice that's less than you think you can do. So just a really doable amount, something that when you think of it, you're like, oh, I can do that, no problem. I can do five minutes, no problem, okay? And then um, we have the app set up from the minis, and then there's a library in the library there's different themes. So themes relate to whys, okay? So there's um, health and energy, there's relaxation and stress reduction, there's love and relationships, there's abundance, there's a section called spiritual light. So what's your, your why? And you can choose a meditation in there that really keys into your why and to what it is that you want to get out of meditation practice. So I've progressed into those categories and pick a meditation in those categories or follow a series of meditations in the category that really relates to your why. And then the third section we have is um, the subtle energy meditation series. This is if you really, say you've meditated for a little while but you really wanna go deeper. You really wanna go beyond. You wanna go into those states that you've always um, heard about meditating, leading uh, people into. But this takes really a significant commitment because they're longer meditations. Um, they're also a little more, um, they ask more of your attention and to go deeper into your inner state. So you wanna have a foundation of feeling inner sensations and the ability to have mindfulness before you go on to this series. And this is a progressive series of eight sequential meditations that really lead you deeper and deeper into your practice. Um, so that's how I'd approach the app or meditation in general. And um, now if you're a complete newbie, you've never meditated, you don't even really know what it is, um, but you think, eh, maybe, Maybe I'll try that. We've put on here a coherent breathing timer. And it's something where it's in the bottom right corner of the app, it's called breathe. And that's a great way just to train yourself to focus on the sensations of breathing. And it has a, a rolling ball that rolls up a hill as you inhale and rolls down as you exhale and up as you inhale and down as you exhale in a consistent rhythm. rhythm. And that entrains your brain, your respiration, your heart rate into this coherent rhythm. And that's a, that's a nice way just to um, try something to shift your state. And 
it's a great thing to do if you are really kind of out of sorts, you know, like, oh, I can't focus on meditation. It, it's something you can just look at and follow the ball and breathe. And it's so easy and it's so relaxing and enjoyable. Just thinking about looking at it relaxes me. <laughs> Watching you talk about it relaxes me. I'm like falling into a hypnotic state here. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it's, it's pretty cool. In fact, my, my son, Greg, who hasn't, you know, really, like I said, he wasn't that into the idea of meditation. He's like, oh yeah, I turn that coherent breathing timer on all the time. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> What, um, and I, I will, yeah, the, I'll make a, another plug for the, the SEM course itself, um, going through that series and the sort of deeper and deeper meditations. You know, I didn't, I was the type of person who didn't really realize what I was getting into. Um, Nobody you know. does. No, no. <laughs> 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 right falling down the rabbit hole uh you know just went into it to be calmer and have a calm state of mind and oh my gosh it's obviously so much more than that um and that course in particular really really gives you that experience and to start to experience those deeper meditations so yeah amazing yeah, and we we will be offering that um starting july 11th for another 10-week series and so if you're interested in that, um, you can let us know by email. Um, if you go to raisingourvibration.net, that's our little web page. And at the top, it has links to go to the app, either an Android or Apple. And then below that, if you scroll down, there's some information on the 10-week the course. And, if you, and there's a place that you can email us. We have an opened registration, but if you're interested, just shoot us an email saying, hey, yeah, I'd love to know when registration is open and we'll be in touch with you. Great. Um, and just, I don't know, as we think about some last, just a last question or two, what, and when you think about the whole app and everything that you've done, what excites you the most about, about this app and where you're at? Mm, people using it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I mean, that's my whole, you know, I'm really, um, I don't know how I come across here, but I'm really an introvert. So look into my eyes, I'm really an introvert. And, and so for me to, like, and I have these meditation experiences, my life in meditation, like I just, it's beyond anything you can imagine. And, and I just, when I'm in that state every day, I'm like, oh, I just wanna share this. Mm. Yeah. I just want people to experience experience it because it changes your life and and it it's it's a whole new state of consciousness to live from and I, I just want to share that. So yeah, didn't know it was gonna there, but <laughs> It did. It's important to me. I want to share it. I want people to use it. I want people to experience these states of consciousness because I, I believe our state of consciousness is what determines the experiences we have in this world and what's happening in this world and the actions we feel inspired to take and how we relate to each other. And um, such a powerful tool to elevate awareness and shift our state of consciousness. And so I'm hoping that in, you know, through the course and the book and the app, Stephen and I, um, and all of us here on ROV can really share that on a really wide scale. So we start to transform the consciousness that's alive on this planet. It's essential that we transform the consciousness of this planet right now and that's what I hope. <laughs> mm, thank you for that very heartfelt, um, brave share. Mm, uh, thanks. Um, yeah, you've, I mean, you've touched me deeply in my own life. Um, so uh, you and Stephen both through this work, um, I honestly can't thank you enough. Mm -hmm. um, so it, uh, it's really, really powerful. Um, and I have a, I have a great hope too, that a lot of people will 
be touched through this app and this work um, and, and belief that they will, I guess, through my own experience and, and belief in it, um, feel, feel deeply that will happen, so. Thanks, Holly. And thank you so much for supporting it and being part of it. And, and yeah, it's, it's all of us. It's, it's all of us together that are shifting our collective consciousness. It is all of us together. Uh, and how beautiful that is, right? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. The, co the collective journey is, uh, is so beautiful. So amazing. It's beautiful and it's, it can be a wild ride, especially right now. Uh, underneath this wild ride, there is a deep abiding inner peace in this, this realm of pure awareness, which holds everything, that everything is contained in this infinite space of awareness. And when we can connect with that and tap into that and live from that, that transforms everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, and your meditations, your and Stephen meditations, and this app is a uh, is like an access point straight into the heart of that. Mm, thank you. Yeah, that's our intention. Yeah, from my perspective, you've succeeded. Yeah, I would say more more than that. It, I I feel like it's the intention of life right now. <laughs> just, it has nothing to do with us, really. It's just this is what life is doing here right now and it's asking all of us to go deeper and mm -hmm. subtle energy meditation is just a path there yeah well you felt that potential and desire for life and channeled it really really beautifully into this incredible uh creation of yours the the app and the book and the course and everything so thanks. thanks. It's, yeah, it's been a, you know, a joint process of a lot of people, Stephen and Greg and the whole RV Greg. community and everyone who participates and, and joins us and adds energy to it. It's all of us together. Yeah. Creating this. Yeah. Um, mm. I have more questions, but I think they would take us to a place. It's just the top of the hour, so it feels like a, a good place to stop. And maybe we'll have to, maybe we'll have to have you on again for uh, for additional discussion. I would love to talk to you. I would love to have a conversation with you about subtle energy meditation versus some of the other Buddhist and global mm -hmm. traditions. And yeah. I would love to hear your perspective mm -hmm. on those different traditions and access points into I'd love consciousness. To. I invite you back for that conversation. Great. I will join you. <laughs> okay. Thank Wonderful. You. Um, well, thank you again for coming yeah. on, um, for yeah. having this discussion and for, um, and again, for the, for the app and for all the work that you do. Really, really honored to know you and learn from you um, and share this moment in time here with you. Mm. Thank you. Likewise, I feel the same to you. So, um, so again, if folks want to, they can download the app on either the Android or um, iPhone um, or go yeah, to raisingourvibration.net. Yeah, if you go to raisingourvibration.net, um, that's just a simple web page and at the top it has links to. Um, so you want to go to that um, page on whatever device that you want to use for the app. And then just click through and it will open up the page to uh, install. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you, Holly. Um, I'm Holly Copeland. I um, do do one-on-one -on -one coaching um, with um, just human potential, health and wellness, meditation. And if you want to learn more about me and the work that I do, you can find me at heartmindalchemy.com. And I would love to have a conversation with you about how I might be able to help you. So um, 
anyway, thank you everyone for joining us who uh, stayed to watch this live um, happy hour. Really uh, sorry I didn't get to questions. I'm still fumbling with how to have a conversation and be present and also mind questions. And if you saw me look away, it was like I was trying to figure out how to do that and I just gave up. I just <laughs> need to figure out how to do those things and I'm, it's still a work in progress. <laughs> So you're doing a great job. Thanks, Holly. Thanks. All right, everybody. Have a good, have a good rest of your day. Thank Bye you. Bye for now. Bye-bye for now.